Hi everyone, it's Roger and James here from the What's on Disney Plus podcast. In this week's episode, we're going to be taking a look at what's coming up on Disney Plus in March. We'll also be talking about our thoughts on Flora and Ulysses and the latest episode of WandaVision, plus jumping through some of this week's news. Now, I am going to put a little bit of a special kind of thing on today. We're actually going to have two podcasts this weekend. Um, it's going to be another podcast, which I'm going to be doing later, um, recording later on today which we're going to be f- looking at Star and all the bits and pieces, because there's so much, we're obviously just a few days from its release. So I'm going to be talking to someone over here in the UK, Buffer, about that. So there were, there's that much news about it. We kind of felt like that was its own separate thing. So we're going to kind of do a lot more of the Star stuff on another episode, which will be coming. So I just want to put that out there, because there's enough as it is. And, and also, James, yeah, James has yeah, got no idea. <laughs> it, it, it doesn't make sense for me to talk about Star because I'm I'm not setting up a VPN to access Star when all the stuff on it's on well not all but most of yeah. the stuff on it's on Hulu over here. Yeah, so. yeah, it's kind of it's kind of it's going to be it's an in, it's an interesting thing. It's certainly um, it's certainly getting some attention um, with I've, especially because we're sharing it on on social media and in our groups and stuff. So there's a lot of attention, I think, from Americans kind of going, what star? Oh, it's like Hulu. It's like not, and then they, you kind of, so it's not really like Hulu because it's not, it's in Disney Plus. It's all there. And, you know, people can say it's not family friendly. There's a real kind of weird mix going on. Um, and really like, there's even like conversations of like, how, how do we, how do we even say like, say for example, like the X-Files is coming to Disney Plus and some people go, well, it's coming to star on Disney Plus. Go, yeah, but we don't say, you know, I don't know, Dr. K's Exotic Animals is coming to National Geographic on Disney Plus. So we or, or WandaVision is coming to Marvel on Disney Plus. We don't say it like that either. So it's like <laughs> it's a bit of a bit of an odd one of like so I'd like, okay, well oh, it's just and then someone pointed out going, well, you can't subscribe to Star separately. So it's it's very odd. But we'll be talking about that more a little bit later on. But we'll be getting through all of the bits and pieces. So let's jump into some of the news. So Obviously, the big one is we found out what's going to be coming to Disney Plus in the United States in March. And also, we got the UK list. We've got that one a little bit earlier. Um, so we're also going to have a quick look through that as well and pull out some highlights. But let's start off with the US list. So this is um, on Friday, the 5th of March. We'll be getting the finale of WandaVision, which on one hand, I am really looking forward to. On the other hand, I'm going, I don't, I'm not ready for this show to end, <laughs> to be honest, after this week. Um, so we're waiting for that one. Um, then we're going to get Raya and the Last Dragon on Premier Access. That'd be priced at twenty nine ninety nine in the US. Um, I'm looking forward to that movie. I think the more I see the clips and stuff, the more I'm like, okay, no, I'm definitely into it. Definitely see what happens with that one. I'm, I'm still on the fence. Thirty dollars is a lot of of uh, money for yeah. for a movie. If I felt like for sure I'd watch it twice before it would normally roll onto Disney Plus, I'd I'd jump on it. Um, we'll wait. I, I will wait until we get a little closer to launch, catch some of the initial reviews, and then probably make a decision based on that. Yeah, I mean, I've gone with the idea of um, I will be uh, buying it to obviously cover it on the website, and I there's a, there's a reason for it. I had this been a DreamWorks movie, I'd say it was the same movie, but literally wasn't part of Disney Plus. At twenty pound, I'd be like, now nah, wait, and I, now it's going to be completely honest with that. Um, this, it, you know, it's that kind of thing of if this was five, six quid, I would buy it, rent it. But at 20 pound, it's not in my zone of where I would normally do it. But with it being a Disney movie, it kind of moves into a different territory for me. Um, but yeah, it's just, I don't know, it's, it's a bit of a, if it was a bit of an odd one. Um, I, I, I'm still not in, on one hand, I always have this kind of issue of, you know, when, if they move, for example, like Cruella or uh, Black Widow over to this is like suddenly then does it change that is the price okay depending on the movie is that how it's I think most people seem to look at it well, I mean it's it's pretty much true that we value different movies yeah differently I mean mm. if you're going to the excuse me if you're going to the box office every movie is basically the same price but there are definitely movies where like yeah I'm not willing to go and see this at the box office for that money and other movies are like oh yeah that that's nothing compared to what I'd be willing to pay for it. Well, I mean, it's not so much now because my my local cinema before all the lockdown stuff would be like, um, you know, the old days of like, well, if you went on a Friday or a Thursday, it would be at one price, and if you went in the afternoon, it was a different price of the evening, and then they completely got rid of all that, and it was five pound a ticket no matter when you went, and unsurprisingly, it got a lot busier 
at all times because it was a cheap price and more people went. But I remember like, I think like when Superman, um, the Superman movie came out and I'm like, I want to see this movie. So I took my wife, you know, on the, on the Thursday night to see it at the first showing. I'm like, wow, that was like 13, 14 pound a ticket. Cause I haven't paid that. I don't think I've paid. And it was a bit unlike all well, like when Star Wars Force Awakens came out and, you know, first showing, you know, eleven pound a ticket. Because once it dropped down to five pound a ticket, no matter what time you went, you kind of lost that. But there was that thing of where you'd be like, "Oh, I'll wait till Tuesday when it's half price." Well, you know. Yeah, I mean that that's exactly what I was saying. You know, there's yeah. some movies where you're like, "Okay, it's worth spending the extra couple dollars to see it the day it comes out or the weekend yeah. it comes out." And other ones you're like, uh, "Over here, the fairly common one was Tuesday would be the discount day. It'd be either be six or eight dollars or something like that." And you're like. Okay, Black Widow, I'll go see that opening night. In fact, I'll see it on the, uh, the midnight launch, which is actually at yeah. 7 p.m. now or, or whatever. Um, but uh, I don't know, uh, Cruella, I might be, uh, I'll, I'll wait till the Tuesday discount day. Mm. Uh, and so, yeah, yeah uh, I think we're saying the same thing there. Yeah, it's def- def- definitely a thing, right? Another show arriving on March the 5th will be Secrets of Sofa Springs, which is going to be doing a completely different release schedule than normal. This one's going to be having five episodes arrive on Disney Plus this coming Friday. And then throughout March into the first week of April, every single Friday, there'll be a new episode of Secrets of Sofa Springs dropping in the United States. Doesn't seem to be happening everywhere else yet. Um, this is a different, completely different type of release schedule than we're used to trying something different. Originally, the show was going to be a Disney Plus original, so it's kind of coming home. But, the, you know, we've seen this recently with what they announced for Golden Ramsey's Uncharted, which will be coming the day after. I'm very interested to see that they're doing something completely different with the show. Yeah, it'll be it'll be something to watch. Not, not necessarily the show itself, although I do gather it's got some pretty good buzz around it. Uh, but how Disney decides to use this as a uh, like a metric moving forward. Will we get more shows that follow this pattern of uh, very closely following the showing on TV? That yeah. was a tangle of words, but I think I got my... Like, yeah, I, I think we're still going to see this kind of thing of it premieres on Disney Channel to kind of give them a little bit of a you know a buzz. But I think we are going to see a, a big shift this year. You know, we've already seen it with Sofa Springs. We've seen it with Gordon Ramsay. You know, that's two big shows that are trying something different. And to me, the minute they start doing this, this shows you that they know something's, or no one's, the people are watching less of those traditional shows and they're just sitting on content. They're literally sitting on this content for months because of the old ways of looking at it. You know, if it was any other platform like Netflix, they wouldn't even be holding it back at all. It was, they're all in on one system. So I think we're going to see more of this. And I think the numbers are going to show that they're going to, because they're going to look at it and go, well, hold on, we're getting more more people watching on Disney Plus than we were on the Disney Channel. Well, you know it's going to happen. You just know there's, you know, it's a, and the kids are just going to chomp and just keep watching it and repeating it. And that's how you're going to be able to create a new, uh, a new shows and all the rest of it. I think it's slightly different maybe with um, Gordon Ramsay. People aren't, the kids aren't going to obviously want to watch that over and over again, but kids shows, they're going to want to do that. Oh, absolutely. I think um, another example coming up will be Big Hero 6. Now that's not exactly the same because they're not dropping the episodes the same week, but they did announce the season three drop would be coming very soon yes. when we are, I think even at the end of March, right? We're going to be talking about that in a bit. Yeah, I mean, it's literally, yeah, it's on the list. Um, it will, I think we're about, yeah, but this is always the same thing. The finale, and then about a month later, we get it on the Disney. And of course, by that time, it's lost so much of its momentum. You know the the repeat value of it. You know because the show started six months ago. Yeah, uh, the one thing though is that the one month is still faster than it used to come for yeah. these shows, and that's that was the yeah. point I was getting at. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, I would have preferred if it dropped like immediately after the season mm-hmm. finale, uh, especially because I finished up season two not that long ago on Disney Plus, and like, all right, let's get Disney, yeah. uh, let's get season three going here. I also think as well it just really boosts up that Friday drop it really makes a, it's going to make a big difference of um, it's like what they're seeing now of being able to say, well, there's a new episode of Sofa Springs dropping every single Friday, right through March. So that's adds it. Um, jumping back into the library content, we've got Garfield, a tale of two kitties is returning and the second season of Heartland docks DMV. I always just think of DMV as isn't, motor, it, 
this is DVM. Yeah. Uh, but yes, the, the DMV in a lot of states is the yeah. Department of Motor Vehicles. Yes. Yeah. See, see, there we go. And then on Friday, the 12th of March, we're getting a brand new series called Marvel's Assembled. Um, this is going to be a new look at how they make shows. The first one is going to be the making of WandaVision. So they'll be sitting in and talking to people about how they made it, how they came up with it, what they did, etc. Um, the interesting thing with this one is it's going to be a continued series. So it will drop after the end of the current season. There's going to be one for Black Widow. There'll be one for Falcon. There'll be one for Loki, one for Hawkeye. So it kind of makes sense. You can, and you can almost go, hmm, it's going to drop in that week in between each show. You know, you can see this one coming a mile away. Um, they do seem to be heavily pushing like extra Marvel content when they're very much aware now that they need constant Marvel content. I'm happy for it to arrive the week after it ends. I think that makes the most sense. You know, rather than waiting like they did with Disney Gallery, the Mandalorian, where they waited five months. You know, it makes much more sense to drop them. They did the same thing with the one at Christmas Day for the second season of the gallery. I and I like I think this name's better. I think Disney Gallery doesn't necessarily it could have been a brand, but they kind of didn't have enough to pull it off. And yeah, because the Disney Gallery really was just Mandalorian and Frozen too. Uh, well, they didn't even not, class the second one as, as yeah. Disney Gallery either. So it, it, yeah, it's more generic. Whereas Assembled, I mean, it's it's got the the theming, it's got the mm-hmm. branding, and it makes sense. And like you said, it fills in those gaps so that now, uh, presuming that the release schedule is correct uh, through the rest of the year, we have a Marvel drop every single week until the end of the year. I mean, I could see this one. This will be dropping like maybe the, the second one will be dropping around uh, mid-March. We'll be getting, or not mid-March, we'll be getting one around mid-May for Falcon and the Winter Soldier and Black Widow. So we'll probably get two episodes in. I'm fine with the making of, you know, Disney been doing these things for years. It makes sense for them to film extra stuff while they're filming it. It's got, that's a big hit. I'm much more interested in Assembled than I am in, for example, The Legends, um, which um, is also going to be getting four episodes on the same day. Um, on the 12th, they'll be getting Falcon, Winter Soldier, Zemo, and Sharon Carter, as I like to call them the highlight reel. Yeah, so now that we know what Legends is, we can set our expectations accordingly, and it's really the purpose of them is to just go, here's a quick reminder of what these characters were up mm. to. It's been a while since we've seen them. Uh, particularly Sharon Carter and uh, Baron Zemo. So here you go, mm-hmm. six, seven minutes long. Just th- these are the important bits of those characters. Uh, yeah, just, yeah, it's kind of one of those things. Of, if you if you have, I mean, I I think because I only just watched uh, Civil War recently. That's kind of in, that's to kind of get ready. Yeah, for this. I, th- that content really isn't for us because we're no. we're a lot more immersed in it. I'd, I know it pretty well, but for for much more casual fans, especially fans who don't read the comics as well, mm. it's just, it is the nice little quick. Uh, mm. This is what you need to know going into Falcon and the Winter Soldier the week after. Yeah, no, no. So that that one's, that one's pretty cool. So we'll be getting that one. Um, then uh, we're getting a new National Geographic uh, feature length documentary called Own the Room, which is. Uh, Five students from different corners of the planet take the rise to a special entrepreneur competition in China, um, including a, so, a someone from a farming town in Nepal who's worked on a bakery in Puerto Rico. There's an, all kind of thing. Kind of feels a little bit like that. Uh, oh, I can't think of which one. It was Science Fair. That's that's the one that um, kind of feels a little bit like that, but for adults. So, yeah. Now, the fact that it's under the National Geographic banner too, hopefully mm. elevates it a little bit. Yeah, so so that'll be something interesting. And um, then we're going to be getting Dr. Junior's, sorry, Disney Junior Dr. McStuffins, the doctor is in. I'll try and say that one a few times over. Um, good. Yeah. And then we're getting a My Disney Story based on Perfume, which is a Japanese girl band. So again, they're just bringing over the Disney Plus originals from Ch- uh, Japan. Um, it's fine. I mean, I think they need to be doing more of this. I think um, if you've got a Disney Plus original in another region, slap some, you know, subtitles on and release it everywhere. You know, yeah. just it makes sense. Um, it's better to have it and not have access to it. You know, then that's the way I look at it. It's, it's that's the much better way of doing it. Yeah, and I I watched the first one of these uh, on the artist Yoshiki, who I'd never heard of before, which it was a really good 
documentary, but you can also tell it's it's a very Japanese documentary that yeah. they just brought straight over. There's no dubbing available yeah. at all, uh, entirely subtitles, but it's a different perspective. Uh, it's told, it, that one at least was told entirely from his perspective. Uh, mm -hmm. There was no narration. There was no uh, anything else. It was just him talking about his history. And, you know, if you're into music, I would definitely recommend that one. Perfume is another band I don't know anything about. They look maybe like they're idols. I'm not sure. The, yeah, the Japanese know. idol thing. Well, they actually they, did. They had a, they, one of their songs was in Cars 2. Yeah. So, uh, I, had, I had, to be honest, I had no idea who they were even until um, this came up. So. I, on, the, on the strength of the first one, I will probably check this one out. Although not on the day it drops because there's lots of other stuff. So, yeah, you know. We're then we're getting seasons one to eight of Dr. K's Exotic Animal ER. Important to note as well, this has been on Disney Plus before. It's kind of returning. So, um, that's, um, it also says Dr. Oakley Yukon Vet season seven, but I've been told that that's actually already available. So, whether or not they mean season eight. Um, there could be an error. There's not always. There's there are there are sometimes little issues of um, this happening where there can be errors. And then we're getting Miss Peregrine's Home for Particular Children. Um, I I kind of enjoyed that movie when that one I we saw it on a while ago. Um, a Tim Burton movie um, set in like basically and the only way i can explain it is basically um an xavier's house with <laughs> full of mutants in the middle of world war ii and a time bubble that they are trying to avoid being blown up by a it's very weird very kooky very tim burton i would recommend it i i, I thought it was a bit i thought it was a good bit of fun i haven't seen it um with it coming to disney plus i will check it out again probably not the week it drops uh because uh, we're starting mm. to get into some pretty heavy drop season at this point yeah so that's that one they're moving there on to friday the 19th of march we'll be getting the very first episode of falcon and the winter soldier so it's obviously a big one can't wait for it they're starting to drop trailers you know we're only a month away from that one arriving now so that one's um, going to be pretty interesting um yeah i mean we just can't wait for that one uh third season of big Zero, big hero six is dropping then so like i said about a month after the finale um, Mexico Untamed and then moving on from there Friday the 26th we'll be getting the first episode of The Mighty Ducks um, which again you know we're then going to have The Mighty Ducks and Falcon and the Winter Soldiers dropping every Friday so that's pretty cool and there'll be five new episodes of Inside Pixar all about foundations um, so they're looking at how they do the lighting, how they do the toys all kinds of bits and pieces uh, seasons one and two of Disney Pickle and Peanut, uh, which is a really weird looking TV series. <laughs> um, Nomeo and Juliet will be arriving in the US. Um, important note with that one, that one we might see a little bit less issue internationally because it wasn't distributed, for example, here in the UK by Disney. Um, so it was released on the Touchstone. Again, a really fun movie. I really enjoyed that one. Have you seen? I have not seen it. I I remember seeing like a trailer for something, something and like that, and, and then just yeah. forgot about it. It's a lot better than the book. It's a lot more easy to watch. It's Shakespeare <laughs> book. <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a lot more fun. I, I just don't use it as you for your um, dissertation for your for your exams. As <laughs> or, or do don't let us tell you how to run your life. Uh, you might not do so well on that one though. Yeah. I just remember when I did my GCSEs, there was a there was the book I had to do Kez. And it was a there was a movie of it. And I knew in the movie there was one scene that was in the movie that wasn't in the book. I just made sure I fast forward and just like, do I read the book again for before back? I said no, I just watch the movie. It's quicker. <laughs> <laughs> so even yeah, that was like twenty years. I remember going to the video shop and read to get just for that. <laughs> um, but nevertheless, right. So that was March's list for the US. What kind of jumped out to you from that? I mean, the obvious ones, um, Falcon and the Winter Soldier, Mighty Ducks. Uh, yeah. I'm obviously looking forward to Disney Big Hero 6 Season 3. A couple other ones that I want to check out um, in overtime, uh, mm. The Secret of Sulphur Springs, uh, dependent on how the first couple episodes go. Yeah. Uh, that uh, we already talked about in my music story. Yeah. Check that one out. And then National Geographic is always good filler that... Um, yeah. Uh, was exploring or Mexico Untamed? Yes, uh, yeah, that looks pretty good. Yes, um, I, I mean, I love going to those. Me I've been to quite a few of the Mayan ruins in Mexico, and I, I love Mexico. I've been 
I numerous times spent a lot of time, I spent months touring around Latin America. So I actually, had, so I will definitely be checking that series out. But it's just nice to be getting, we've got two big Disney Plus originals coming to be watching. Actually, we, I mean, if you include Wonder Vision, we've got three different shows to be watching, which is great. You know, the days of one show is kind of, you know, we're starting to drop off. So I'm looking forward to that one. Now, let's just jump into the UK one. So this is important to note. This is for the UK and Ireland. There might be some differences with, um, like, Canada and also. So we're getting most of the same. So all the same things like uh, WandaVision, Falcon, the On Their Own, etc., and Ryan, The Last Dragon. We'll be getting all of that. Finally, we're getting Cinderella. We're getting that a few weeks later. But there's going to be some star originals dropping. So we'll be getting new episodes of the four that have previously announced, and Gunn Hellstrom. We'll be getting Solar Opposites, Love Victor, and Big Sky. Also dropping throughout the month each week, we'll be getting Dollface, which is a Hulu original. That will be dropping each week. Um, that will be running right through March and April. There also is going to be Next, um, a show that aired on Fox. That will be that will be launching. Um, I'm just trying to see where because there's, there's so much coming in on. That will be launching on Friday the 12th. Fortunately, it's, it's always a bad thing with these shows of, when they've been cancelled before you've even started seeing them, of like you kind of go, do I watch it? <laughs> it's, you know, it's um, so that one that will be coming, and then there's also going to be a free form special um, about COVID, love and COVID will be dropping. They'll be dropping all four episodes at the same time for that one. Um, again, doing something a little bit different. So that will be dropping on the 12th of March. As well. So that's, and then there's going to be some extra movies. We'll be getting like Dodgeball. We're going to be getting the Cleveland Show. The Catch, and I really enjoyed that series. Me and my wife watched that one a few years ago. We'll be getting um, a few other things. We'll be getting Gone in 60 Seconds, Taken, Taken 2, uh, The Beach, Thumbelina, which apparently is internationally is distributed by uh, Disney, but I think in the US it's a bit different. Um, so we're going to, our list really revs up because of getting the new movies constantly. Um, we're going to be getting like My Name is Earl. But the primary thing really is, we're getting essentially right through March, maybe four to s well, between four and seven star original episodes dropping every Friday. Suddenly, that you know that completely changes, and then you get those extra movies thrown in. Um, I've got a, we've had a lot of feedback of how our March list, which is so different to the US one. Normally, they're quite close. There's normally at least some crossover with the episodes. But bar the Disney Plus originals, the library gets completely different, and those star originals just change everything on that Friday. I mean, it's like if I said to you now, of like, oh, oh in the Disney, Plus, oh yeah, you've got seven new series dropping every single Friday. It does completely just rev change how how you look at it. But yeah, it's it's going to be interesting. I mean, even without Star, we are starting to get to that point. We're starting. We will start seeing not that not quite that volume but at the end of march we've got both the mighty ducks and the falcon and the winter soldier in the same week mm. and i expect moving forward not not immediately but over time uh we will be getting to a point where three or four major episodes will be dropping every week plus maybe a movie or two here and there yeah because it's a kind of weird thing of like march's list especially um there's not a lot of disney content there's a real um I mean, we've got to pull this out on them there. You know, if you actually look at the numbers, March is probably one of the weakest months they've had since they launched. Um, if you took a look at the library, the library is very lacking. I am expecting there might be an extra title or two that will be revealed a bit near the time. You know, things like The Muppet Show and Cinderella were kind of big announcements that they've done. So I wouldn't be at all surprised if there's a little extra big one coming at some point that they've they do, they do this every month they always hold something back you got to um, keep the buzz going right <laughs> yeah that's it so yeah so we've talked about um that um okay let's talk now i'm um, interesting one that happened this week um disney plus in canada launched its social media i mean only like 18 months after it launched almost along the lines of going hmm Maybe now the US one doesn't actually apply to the Canada anymore because they're kicked off with, they're going to be getting Nomad Lad. Nomad Land will be arriving on April the 9th. This is one that's just arrived on Hulu in the United States yesterday and in cinemas. It's due to be released um, in cinemas over here in March, but 
Um, our cinemas are closed, so I don't know what's happening there. But that was a big announcement straight out the gate for one of the big movies coming to the star brand. On I thought that was just really important that that one's mentioned. Yeah, I, I need to look up to see if how that movie's doing critically. And I'm interested in seeing it. Um, I don't have Hulu at the moment, okay. but that might be something worth checking out. And it, it is a big uh, catch for Canada to be able to come out and say, hey, we, we've got this. It's going to be coming to Disney Plus on Star. Well, this is, I mean, even even if cinemas were open, you know, the UK and Australia would be all getting them, you know, at three months later. So we're going to see that, you know, we are going to be, I mean, this is why essentially you can see that you can see the difference on the website in the last like like two months since they announced star you know the amount of content that we're having to look at now is just drastically changed and the tone of it's all changed and things like no bad lad i can't say that. no you're having a real bad time is, is um such a different kind of content to be thinking you know and it, it, it it's great i mean it, this is a this is a big thing coming forward for um and also it was just a big move for it to shift to hulu in the us you know they're doing the, the dual system um i think obviously as well this is a movie that may be necessary it wouldn't have brought in a huge amount at the box office they had to get it out there but i think it was such a smart move for them to do this they're going to end up having to send it to, um, to hbo once the deal was once the kind of windows open but i think we'll be seeing a lot more of this with hulu as well you'll be seeing movies arrive much quicker um while they try and navigate what's going on right now <laughs> yeah no one really knows what's going on yeah. anymore but yeah, yeah the hulu will be used in this way for movies that wouldn't be appropriate on disney plus without the star brand attached to it uh there will be more like this i mean next i think next year the deal i think with hbo comes to an end it's 2022 i don't know if it's the end of 2022 or if it's the beginning so there could be a i'm not entirely sure but when the, when that hbo deal expires this will then become the standard for hulu because that will be one of their core things of getting content will be from 20th century studios and searchlight so we'll see a lot more of that one we also had the first trailer drop for cruella um which would be interesting what did you think of that trailer about 50 50 on it uh so on the one hand i'm really glad that they they're not trying to be like oh yeah cruella she has a tragic history that explains why she's such an evil now she's just evil right out the gate uh and out of all the disney villains she's the one you can't really give a morally uh ambiguous no. backstory it's like no she wants to kill dogs and make coats out of them the you I mean, let's, let's really I mean, wave let's, that one away. <laughs> I mean, let's be honest. Cruella is a much e more evil villain than even Thanos or the Emperor because yeah. she she wants to kill dogs. I mean, I mean, you yeah. know, even Thanos kind of. I mean, he says, oh, "I want to take out all the plants." He never mentioned dogs and puppies and kittens. You know, <laughs> <laughs> no, there, there's a, there is a rule in in movie making. You don't kill the dog. I mean, no matter how evil the villain is, you do not kill the <laughs> well, dog. Well, you do sometimes. <laughs> you do sometimes. I mean, as with any rule, there's always exceptions, but. Yes. Uh, more often than not, unless you have a very good reason to kill a dog, a la John Wick or something like that. Uh, hey, look, man, I managed to get three don't. movies out of that one. The, well, I, I in, think in, four. I've got a fourth one yeah. coming. Yeah, I always. it tends to be what in like in wrestling term would be like cheap heat. You, it's like when you call bad, you, if you kill the dog off, it's a very cheap way of getting the, your point over. I've, ne I've never heard that term before, but I, I totally get it. it and <laughs> I, I can think of a couple other things that would fall under that too. Yeah, it's like if, you, um, if so, you walk into an arena and you just kind of like, say you're in, I don't know, say you're in, I don't know, Boston or something like that, you insult the local football team and you instantly get booed. It's that kind of thing of, it's just cheap heat. It's easy, easy shoots. Yeah, um, yeah. But yeah, so um, what did you, I have anything else jump at you? Yeah, so, all right, so that part I liked. On the other hand, um, I'll state the obvious and go, this is very much a Harley Quinn inspired yeah. take on the character. And it's like, not really all that interested in a disney version of harley quinn because i'm not all that interested in the dc version of harley quinn to begin with uh but i get that she yeah. is extremely popular uh and i can see why they'd want to but i'm just like i'm not super excited to see this angle of the character there's a lot of there's a lot of comparison to harley quinn and um again <laughs> in wrestling right now we've got alexa bliss doing the exact same thing where she is this crazy woman that kind of gives off the harley quinn but you know i've already been seeing this film up so i kind of was like okay i see where they're going with it um the trailer was a surprise i'm going to be completely i had zero 
zero interest in this movie. Uh, it was like a Cruella re- uh, prequel. Mm, what? Well, I'm not interested. I didn't. I like. I never really had that connection with that movie. Watched trailer. And went. That looks absolutely bonkers. I like it. I like the look of that one. Um, so now the question is supposed to be coming out on the 28th of May. There is no chance that they have said that from now to not do it. It's, it's, it's you know, they, if they were, if they had any doubt of that movie being released, but noticeable. And then didn't say the word where in any of the um, information. There was no, it said it's coming on the 28th. No mention of theaters, no mention of Disney Plus, no mention of Premier Access. Very kind of along the lines of, we're just kind of going to see where we are. <laughs> but I think they're definitely on that date. Um, I'm going to be on. I think it'll be cinemas and Premier Access. I think that will be what they do with this one. But they did seem to be very, like, not coming to cinemas only. They didn't do that bit. Yeah, no, uh, it's telling. And, and to be honest, though, I wouldn't read in into it very much they're just they're just covering their bases because uh who knows what the world is going to look so like do you do you think because uh, i think they're going to wait until they see what happens with raya and if raya does okay does enough we might get a few like black widow and raya and maybe whatever's coming out um in i think a free guy i don't know if they can do it with that one but with uh i think they're gonna have to do this on a on their first few summer movies to kind of get some level of getting people back to normal well it's not even just that you need to get people into the theaters in the first place and you need mm. to get past that um that worry the trip edition of yeah. going to theaters so they they want to start small so that when black widow comes out going back to theaters is normal or whatever mm. now i'm not going back to the theater not for a long time but i think well, that they are going yeah. to want to i think cruella is going to be a joint launch it's going to be on disney plus as premiere with a movie theater as well well i mean i i mean i am set to get my vaccine next week i'm booked in from a slot so suddenly that does actually um it does i it does change things a little bit on the idea of like i will have that extra bit of level of protection of whether or not i could go you know if it's in the cinemas and be like you know if i've got to wear a mask and i've got the vaccine i'm suddenly then might be feeling a little bit more confident to do it so they you know had i not been getting the vaccine until the end of the summer that might be different so there is there is going to be that um aspect mentally i think in a lot of us um of how that will work um but i think it is going to take time um i think people are going to want i think there is going to be a big boom at some point once everyone's get their confidence back because they're gonna be fed up with staying in. But then I think it's gonna be a thing of everyone gonna be at the cinema go, there's noise and people I like what well, I've got used to watching movies without all of this. <laughs> yeah, no, I am I'm, I'm about to upgrade my uh my television at home. Just like, you know, uh yeah. Do I do I want to go back? But no, that is definitely true. I am still looking at at best end of spring, probably mm. more likely in summer when I'll be eligible for it here. Because I'm at, I'm at the actual absolute yeah. back of the line in terms of priority, which is fine. Um, but yeah, I, and I think we talked about it yeah. previously. Once the vaccine does start to become much more widespread and, and people feel more confident going out, people are just going to want to go to yeah. the theater. They're going to want to go to parks. They're going to want to go to all the things that they couldn't do during lockdown, even if they weren't all that interested in it before, just because it's something that's not at home. Yeah, well, I think that's the thing. is Once we've got enough people... Um, and, and that's going to be the key thing the, the you know the mass majority of people doing which i still think is going to take most of the summer um so i think going into the fall we might be in a different situation in terms of so i do think disney are going to have to be a little bit cautious with a few of their summer movies um they're going to want to speed things up they're going to want to do things a bit differently they've got to encourage people back to the cinema but at the same time those movies need to make money so there's a there's you know and if you put it on premier access, you can at least try and pull in, you know, some money on the side for people going, well, if they, if, the way I look at it is a bit like, like, not necessarily encouraging people to stay at home. It's more about the fact of, you know, if you can prize that extra $30 out of a family that would have just waited because they were going, oh, well, we're not going to cinema. So we'll wait for it to Disney plus you. Oh, that money's lost. So if they, you got to, how you look at it is where it is. Right? I, I think Premier Access is a safety net for them yeah. in this case. At some point, that will change. At some point, they start uh, 
the money from Premier Access starts taking money away from theaters, from people who would have gone, but it's like, I don't know, it's just more convenient for me to sit on the couch. I'll pay the extra money for that. The only, the only difference is, is uh, Bob Chapek has said about it being, you know, they are looking at ways of doing this in the future because they do want to have, give people the choice. And I think if it's a premium rental, you do, it does change the thing of, you know, if you are on your own and it's, and you are going to be like, no, nah, I'm not paying that money. But if you're a family, but they want the big families going to the cinemas. And that's where the difference is. You know, I could see like my brother to take four of them to go see Raya and the Last Dragon changes it up a little bit compared to, um, you know, the more going cinema. So there is a, there is a, there is a big difference. I think, you know, for us on our own going, it's cheaper to go to cinema, but there is a difference for families. And in all likelihood, if, uh, if the kids are young, you can almost certainly guarantee that as long as they don't hate the movie, they will watch it again very quickly after the first time they watch it. I just think it's very telling that Disney weren't quite so forthcoming with this concept of premier access. They're still very, they're still dead. And they literally said in the, in the recent quarterly results, they're analyzing data. That's all they're doing. They're just ch- checking it. And Raya will give them a lot more data. I suspect it's less um, concern about the cash flow and more concern with the perception. Because obviously yeah. when they first announced Premier Access for Milan, uh, it did not go over well. And no. it will continue to not go over well. But uh, if they continue to do it, it'll, it'll normalize. Because it's I think, just I think if they right. turned around and literally were like, right, every single movie we are ever going to release will be available on Premier Access when it hits the cinemas for 20, you know, and be very kind of like, this is the new, this is our new system. Here it is. Bing, bada, boom, your choice. If you don't like it, go cinema. And that's, I think if they were, but they're very cautiously kind of, because they don't want to, the, the, they make so much money at the box office. Why would they want to change it? They, you can, this is where the, dis, you know, that disruption of streaming gets in the way of their existing business and they don't like it. And Disney were the only ones really kind of pulling in, the big numbers even before covid i mean universal was like 17 day after release onto onto their um digital platforms and then H- hbo max has completely done something completely different you know there's a lot of sh- there's a lot of shifting going on a lot of shifting um and i remember way back when covid started it feels like it was a long time ago it was just only a year um universal you know they dropped uh the the trolls world tour on yeah. ad like direct access here you go guys it, it would have been in theaters right now but here it is and uh it did really well so yeah i think that, that was that kind of thing of like oh we haven't seen anything because everyone just pulled everything so that one was different um so yeah so we've got corella they've also announced two um two new things about a quiet uh detroit choir um there's going to be a scripted series and also a documentary series to go along with it they got into the finale of americans got talent so nice to see them working on something a bit different. Uh, let's just be honest. I mean, I think just the thing of it, it being called the choir and being about a choir instantly didn't grab a lot of attention. <laughs> I, I'm sure there'll be interest for it. You get name recognition from America's Got Talent or, yeah. or all those. Um, admittedly, I forgot that show was still going on. But, you know, it, it, it boosts it a bit. But I think for the most part, people are just like, oh, okay, it's a yeah. show about a choir. Cool. Yeah. So that so that was that was like their big press release for the week was about this one here. So uh, we'll have to wait. I'll. It's the kind of thing for me of like, let me see the trailer. I'll I'll obviously watch it. But if this thing was never made, I I off the what they've said so far, I'm like, they entered Britain's Amer- oh, America's Got Talent and didn't win. Okay, is that? fine <laughs> it's just like you know there's i mean i personally you know all this like britain's got talent you know we've seen so many of them now we like they've been running it's like it's, it's nothing new but we'll I have to wait and see so let's jump now into some things of what we've been watching so did you manage to catch flora and ulysses this week I did catch flora and ulysses and i'm glad i did that was a very entertaining movie uh far more entertaining than it should have been honestly i know we both of us were looking forward to it the the trailer was really good but it was like yeah this was a lot of fun i the one thing i kept thinking was like this is what timmy failure should have been this is i mean i i don't know how to mention it in my review because it was a bit like this feels like it was it's like like timmy failure was just literally like the same week like this time last year 
And it was like, I kept thinking, this is actually like a Timmy Thayer movie had he been night, had he been a character you could connect with. Because the girl, she did have, you know, she was excited, but she, was, she wasn't like that all the time. You know, because we'd said about that in the, in the trailer of like, you know, is she going to be annoying? With it? And like, no, she wasn't. Not in the slightest. Didn't even, yeah. wasn't even on my radar. Of I, like, I have to give credit to her. It is very easy for child actors to be uh, extremely annoying. And she was not. For the, yeah. uh, and maybe one or two scenes, but those were more like scenes where it would have made sense for her to be hyper annoying rather than it, just the actress but even that it was just like you know she was excited but it was over within seconds it wasn't mm-hmm. like it was and i just i just thought it was a it was a real like i would say it's a great movie to watch with the family this weekend it's a it's a fun little movie i think marvel fans are going to be liking a lot of the little easter eggs in there um um there was one particular one and it kind of also it was i can't help but keep thinking of deadpool with the superhero landing because the squirrel does the superhero landing and then monica did the superhero landing as well on the, and of course i'm thinking they both arrived the same day literally like the two two new superheroes that arrived on the same day both hit the superhero landing and i was just like yeah thank you very much <laughs> i hope that people uh don't know what you're talking about if they haven't seen uh, wandavision this <laughs> well it, it's <laughs> either, either way it's it's you know, you knew it was coming, but it, yeah, was, it, was it, it was that kind of thing of just like, I liked as well that the thing is with Flora and Ulysses, there was no big plot to, for him to become a hero. You know, it wasn't like he was going to rescue someone. He didn't, have, I'm glad he didn't actually have to rescue uh, Flora. They didn't, they didn't go down that traditional route of, you know, it's still a squirrel. Yeah. He can, he's got a few, it's strong and it can fly, but it's still no good in battle. It's not, it's, yeah. you know, it's, it's just a really good soup. It, and I, I like that aspect to it. Yeah. The only, the closest they got to it was saving the hysterically blind kid uh, when he was about to fall through the, the floor. Um, but that Let's was the honest. Of, I, if I was, if I had a choice between saving that kid or having a pop tart, I'd have a pop tart. I, <laughs> Yeah, it wouldn't even be a tough choice, to be honest. I, it was really funny, though, because they're like, is, is this Matt Murdock? He's, he, this, this looks exactly like Daredevil if he was, like, 10. Yeah, but I also like the fact that they were playing up on that, and he goes, hold on, I'm just going to use my echolocation. You know, and him playing along with it. And I'm just like, and I'm like, I like that. I like the aspect that they were, you know, did they need that kid in it? I don't think they did. But he was a nice little comedy bit of sidekick i did um, like that they threw him through the vent I'm just like <laughs> in this event whoosh <laughs> we're gonna throw the kid because he's resilient and he's shown that he can take a fall that's literally the justification they used yeah i the other thing i really enjoyed about this was i liked the fact that the parents were humans they were funny they had emotion they weren't one-dimensional parents they actually ha- I wasn't expecting that from this. I was expecting it to be, you know, the, the, you know, quite often in Disney movies, parents are a little bit of like a, they're just there as a, a thing for the plot. They actually felt like they were actually important in this. Honestly, the the mother had some of the best lines in the movie. Uh, her little yeah. offhand comments that popped up every once in a while would just kind of mutter under her breath or when she was writing. Yeah. I, and I just, I, I think, you know, the fact that the dad was in, so much involved because I wasn't expecting, I thought he was, you know, it was, you know, thought, oh, here we go. He's a downbeat dad and all the rest of it. And he's, and he's, but it's like, no, he was in it quite a bit. You know, the whole scene of, you know, he was involved with the, with the squirrel. And I mean, just him getting shot. I mean, I mean, not being funny. You never get, how many times he can get shot? But like, and I'd be saying, um, you might, you could go on to the boss and been like, your, your guy keeps shooting me. You know, you would have been fired <laughs> for that. <laughs> so the, there's a couple parts of the movie where you're just kind of like, actually, well, actually, um, yeah, that dude would have been fired, but they'd also be in federal prison for, for like breaking in and causing chaos. Yeah, I mean, it was a, it was a bit like, okay, it's fine. It's just him on the roof, and then just a screw, and it was just like, okay. I mean, there were it made me laugh. I wasn't expecting it. Um, I mean. It, I got to the end. I liked that it was a 90 minute quick, fast boost in and out. No, no pulling any punches straight in. And that, um, cause I didn't, it was one of those movies. I didn't even, it's like, I'm not going to make my wife watch this. Cause she's probably not going to enjoy it. Cause it's, it's too kiddie. 
And I messaged her and said, oh, I'm watching it. And she goes, I was like, what are you doing? Oh, I'm watching a movie about a super powered squirrel. <laughs> so I didn't think you'd want to watch it. She goes, carry on. <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay. It was like, it was, it was a nice, and I was sitting there going, this is exactly what Disney Plus needs more of. These kind of low budget, I mean, even not low budget, but I mean, there seem to be quite a bit of CG with that um, squirrel. I think this, the squirrel was entirely CG. The cat was entirely CG. Uh, the one particular the, cat. Um, that one you can definitely say it didn't look like a cat. No, <laughs> it looked like a cat that had been like shaved like a poodle. Yeah. Um, but I'm pretty sure Ulysses was almost entirely CG, minus yeah. a couple of things like when they they toss him into the cage or something that was probably like mm. a doll. But um, yeah, they, they, but he he looked pretty good. Uh, yeah. the, it was a really good model. I, there were most of the movie you're, you're aware it's a model, yeah. but not in the the way that takes you. You're just like yeah, you know. Still looks no, I, I, I'm going to be honest. It was a real highlight. It was a real kind of thing of um, that one is going to be, I can see that one being in part of the, my like top 50 originals. It'll be in the top, top end quite a lot. Cause I, I just thought it was a great family movie. I'd say it's, it kind of, it, it feels like on a different level of some of the other movies. Cause this was like, this was always a Disney plus movie. It was never going to cinemas and then got pulled over because it kind of had that blurred lines. This one kind of feels to me a little bit more on that line of like Togo, like the quality level of like this could have been released in cinemas. Whereas like, um, you know, not my Artemis Fowl, but um, some of the other movies, you're like, I can see why this one came to stream. I thought it was like, okay, now this one, this one was much higher quality than I was expecting. Alternatively, if it had been a Disney Channel original, I think uh, it would have gone down as one of the, the better Disney originals over the years. Because uh, yeah. a lot of them just fade away the week mm. after they come out. Well, I don't but, think you would have got the budget had it been a Disney Channel original. I mean, there, there's yeah. certainly that too. And uh, it would have looked visually different. They probably would have had different actors too. Cause some of them, uh, we're not exactly talking like A-list actors, but you know, the father, uh, the animal control guy are both pretty well-known comedians. The mother. Well, wasn't it pretty much just a duck <laughs> I'm like I, literally a most bit, of them, yeah most of them do the voices of the characters in yeah the- so uh i think we had i don't we remember did- which brothers but we've got two of the brothers and we had webby yeah so yeah. there's quite, there quite a bit of a, a connection there with ducktales and even he sat there reading the ducktales comic book and i just i do so many little i think as a comic book fan there's so much of the little you know and they, you know her going on about you know finding its origin story and doing, you know, and it was like, I like, I like them, you know, the fact that they can play on that as a, and they can use Marvel. They could use Marvel to kind of tell that about actually having to pull on Marvel. So I, I know that parts of it take place in the comic store, but I think the, the part that got me with those was the gamers, uh, yeah. the, the board gamers. As, I, as a gamer myself. <laughs> I, I was going to say, cause I bet you, you felt that one where yeah. she accidentally wrecks like this, I, it looked like kind of a, a war like hammer a war, it, setup yeah, or something like that. Yeah. But I was like, oh man, I I haven't actually played Warhammer, but I know people who do. And if that had happened to them, I, I mean, there'd be grown men crying right there. <laughs> you just you drop one of your one of your figures on the floor and it snaps, and you 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 yeah. So I as a as a tabletop gamer that did also go I had an extra level. <gasps> Yeah, that, that was that was like a, a visceral I, moment. And I and I remember with like when I joined my club years ago, you know, the the story of the the guy that once flipped the table because he he lost, you know, like years later, <laughs> just like yeah, it also, is not. Also, on the same note, I I really like the nice touch of the jelly donut getting speared by the sword, yeah. kind of like <laughs> dripping down like it was bleeding. It was a great visual. Yeah, it, it was it was a lot of fun. I really can't recommend this movie enough. Um, I think this is, I think it kind of, I think it might have slid under the radar a little bit of a Disney Plus release because of one division taking it away. Um, I mean, if you want to, just think of it as the Squirrel Girl origin story in the MCU. It's not, yeah. but it's close enough that you can just kind of like squint at it and go, yeah, that's yeah. Squirrel Girl. Yeah, it's fun. Um, so before we get into one division, also um, just briefing, we had. We've got three star, four star originals dropping um, internationally on Tuesday. So you got Soul Opposites. We got Love Victor. We've also got Big Sky and Hellstrom. Um, so these are all going to be available on Disney Plus. And um, I've seen the first two episodes of those three. Haven't seen Hellstrom. Hellstrom is the the I don't know what they do. That is the one that they don't mention. 
they don't show trailers for, they don't give screeners for, they don't put out any mention. It's almost as if it doesn't exist. Um, it's a bit like how Hulu released it. Um, <laughs> yeah, even even on the Hulu side of things, I I, I wasn't even well that, aware that Hellstrom had dropped until yeah. several weeks after. It's like my coworkers like, oh yeah, I think Hellstrom's coming. Oh no, it's already out. And like, yeah, but I can't be bothered to actually watch this. <laughs> yeah, so I'm going to watch them on Tuesday when when they drop, just because I'm like intrigued of like it must be. It's like, is it really that bad or is it just a, I mean, it just feels horrible when a TV series is just like shadowed. It's a bit odd. So, so we've got the four. So I watched the first two episodes of the other three. Love Victor. Really enjoying that one. Um, I can't help but feel like they really missed the ball on Disney plus with this one. I've, um, it's very, I mean, it's that kind of thing of, it feels very high school musical, just like a level above it a little bit. Um, that it's nothing you haven't really seen before, but it's obviously being told from his point of view and very, very well made. A very, very well made scene. I, I just, every time I finish watching an episode, I'm just like, this would have done amazingly well on Disney Plus and it would have been important on Disney Plus. Whereas the way it got released kind of lost that a little bit. And um, I think it's great for kids to watch, um, kind of see it from their side and get a little bit of information and, just this whole like this is in a conflict of what's going on with him you know with his sexuality and just a, a, a just a good teen that's full of cliches full of high school stuff you know oh there's a party at somebody's house and they're drinking apparently that was why and it's like yeah it wasn't um it, it is funny and i am there's definitely a ser- series i've i've been enjoying um big sky um, a brand new that's dropping currently in the US on ABC, basically set in like Montana with these two detectives tracking down um, a bloke that kidnaps um, kidnaps um, prostitutes at truck stops to sell them on in sex in a sex state. So not your typical Disney Plus <laughs> original. Um, uh, Watch this one with my wife. We got to the end of the two episodes, and my wife went. When are we? When where have we got another episode? I'm like, you're gonna have to wait two weeks until the, until Disney Plus drops it, and she's like, going, oh, so we're gonna be watching that. That's that's like a, and it's instantly like that. Big Sky is one that me and my wife will be watching um, each week. So that's and it's kind of quite nice. It's that kind of thing. Of, and then my wife pointing out, this is a normal TV series. You know, there's there's no superheroes, there's no superpowers, there's no. This is a normal TV series that could have been on Netflix or anything else, and me and my wife are definitely involved in it. And she said, it's finally something decent. <laughs> she, doesn't like, she doesn't like Star Wars. She doesn't like Marvel, but this is a TV series, you know, that she would, that, that we're going to be, and that's what I want. That's what I want from these Star Originals is something that I can watch with my wife. And this is what, you know, the guy from Star and Disney did say, this is time, for, this is me time. This is time for adults. This is content for, that they want us to enjoy and for adults to enjoy in the evening and big sky is the one out of all of them that will be a thing that i will watch with my wife and i'm really great series i um, love the first two episodes got to the end of it and go yeah this is this is a good one i haven't seen it at all but i, I might check it out based on that it's, it's, it's on abc it's i mean i know it's that kind of thing of like it's it's, it's a bit there's a, quite a few cliches and stuff in there but it's just I mean, I had the minute as well. It's just kind of nice just to watch something fresh, you know, um, a, a new series, a new drama series. Um, yeah, so that one's good. And something that's not aimed at kids. No. Um, Solar Opposites is a new is an animated series. The first season dropped on Hulu last year. The second season is coming up um, next month on um, Hulu in the US. This is a basically third rock from the sun meets Rick and Morty. Um there's aliens come to Earth and because they want to, they're growing some little pupae, which is going to then consume and terraform the Earth. And they have got no concept of hu- what humanity is and are trying to deal with it because they've now got a house in the suburbs and are dealing with petty information. It is absolutely bonkers. It's really fun. It kind of reminds me of, of like when I used to watch like South Park when I was at college and like, you know, Family Guy. When it, <clears throat> all those shows like I used, used to watch like 15 years ago, and kind of maybe not necessarily grew out of, but just didn't have time to kind of keep up with them. This kind of was like, oh, this is you know, and they're swearing and they're killing people and shrinking people and putting them into little. But essentially, this kid has got like a wall like I've got, but instead of toys, he just miniaturizes people and puts them in storage. <laughs> 
I have to tell you that a combination of 30 Rock and Not Rick and Morty. Third, third Rock from the Sun. Oh, sorry. Third Rock yeah. from the Sun and Rick and Morty. Uh, I would be hard pressed to find a combination that I find less interesting. <laughs> I, had but, no, I had no idea what this series was. And it was a bit like, and then um, and then this. It's like it's swore and I go, oh, this is this is so it's like and this I keep finding this of like looking at, at all this star stuff and this and when I see I've seen you know I've seen a little bit of footage of the thing moving and I'm just like this just feels so weird. I think I've just I've like two years of like of, of Disney Plus being so family friendly and then just watching all this content and just going, This is so cool. I'm love I'm it's like in instantly, we know we're getting new episodes every week. This is just such a weird thing to be watching on Disney Plus. And it's going to take a while, I think, for people to get their heads around. I, it, some people might never get their heads around it, quite honestly. Yeah, we are still getting comments going, this isn't family friendly. Why is it on there? Not necessarily, not so much from, from people internationally, but there's so much, there's a, so much excitement about the launch of Star. That's why we're doing that extra episode this week, because there's just so much stuff that we want to get in on. But let's now jump into, um, the next one, One Division. Yes. What did you think of this episode? And I'm going to say, we're going to go into the spoilers because it's hard yeah. to do. This was another episode where the first uh, half, two thirds, I was just kind of drifting in and out. Really did not engage me in the first half. Uh, probably once Monica uh, confronts Wanda is when I got yeah. like super into it. And of course, that was the very end of the episode. Uh, the last five minutes were fantastic the rest of the episode is i i honestly was playing with my phone for parts of it so well i i, I was I, I enjoyed it much more than that i def i was enjoying the whole um darcy and vision like combination I, of them they, yeah they were so boring i uh, see I, I kind of liked the fact of there was that kind of weird thing of like vision's not right vision's not um he's not he's just, even though he's aware, he's still learning what's going on and he had to learn. What I enjoyed about this episode was being inside the hex and having Darcy Vision and also now Monica free changes it because, you know, there's that whole thing of like them being able to do what they want and being open gives them, and I think Darcy needed that. I think Vision needed that information. You know, he said about them having that connection. And so I enjoyed that. I mean, the whole thing of her just sat, sat there and, you, you know, she's she's on the lines of she wants to go near. Vi- she's like she's not in any rush to get to Scarlet Witch. She's not she's not confronting Scarlet Witch. That's not her job. She knows that's way above her. Um, <laughs> that, okay, great, yeah, know, yeah. Just like you know, she's not in a rush to go and see. You know, she's going to be staying as far away as possible. Um, she's because she's not. You know, she's just she knows she can just be done. So yeah, she's I mean, not. She, she's used to hanging out with Thor. She knows yeah. the kind of things that that could happen yeah. to her. Um, yeah. No, I did like that dynamic. I did like that that vision is starting to learn things. I think what disrupted it for me was the, the um, talking to the camera bits, oh, the uh, modern family office, family. Yeah. Uh, modern family office, parks and rec, whatever. And I was just like, I'm not into this style at all. This, this doesn't entertain me them, them quipping. And, and I was just like, yeah, move on, move See, on. See, I, on, the whole on. thing of them like doing the modern family of like the camera moving. And then there's kind of like looking at the and going, you know, and going, I kind of, I think as I do like Modern Family, I kind of didn't mind that. I think they went a little bit too much into it. Um, and I think, I essentially think the sitcom aspect is gone now. I don't think we're going to have any more of that after this. Well, there's nowhere else for them to go. I, yeah, yeah, I don't know where they would go. They'd have to project what's happening in in like the 2020 sitcoms that haven't even come out yet. I will say the one thing I did like was... Best. One... <laughs> it, Staying away yeah. from everybody. <laughs> Uh, I did appreciate there's just like she's, I'm gonna have a quarantine me time. I was like uh, th- that was a scene that was shot after uh, after quarantine <laughs> happened. Um, no, I did like the scene where Vision finally gets fed up with the camera. Where he's like, "Why am I doing this? This is stupid. I have things to do." <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, that was good. Um, I think the key thing, obviously, there was so much speculation over who this person that uh, Monica was going to go and see. I mean, I don't know if you saw. I mean, ex- a lot of it was expecting uh, Reed Richards. Um, Professor Xavier, all kinds of people that she was going to meet. And it was a little bit like, you guys, have, I think even, I think the internet even outplayed itself in like getting a little bit carried away. 
<laughs> well, it was, yeah, there was that. There was like, uh, it's going to be Rhodes or War Machine, or it's going to be yeah. one of the major characters from there. And then there was also the the Quicksilver is going to turn out to be Mephisto or yeah. or uh, basically the devil um, uh, or something like that. And like, um, actually, it was, it was a little bit more mundane than that. I mean, it's not it's not like mm. normal, but it, it's, yeah, you guys overshot just a little bit. And this is part of why I also didn't make any predictions. It's kind of like, no. Nah. Eh. I I'm kind of I'm gonna be honest. I'm kind of going into this with the idea of I'm not looking for spoilers. I'm not looking for leaks. I'm not looking for theories. I mean, I see plenty of them in the groups, but as I'm along the lines of, I'm kind of going in just I'm just along for the ride. I'm on this. It's a roller coaster, and I've got I've got I haven't read House of M. I've got no idea where it's going. I've got no idea. You know, I had no idea who Agnes was. You know. I had to Google her afterwards to find out who she is. Because I, I, I suspect if you look at Google, there's probably a huge spike of uh, yes. people looking uh, that character up. But this, but I mean, for me, it was I don't, and I'm gonna, it was the first time there was an you know the standby logo when it comes up, where I actually went no, <laughs> that was audible, kind of like. Oh, Damn it! <laughs> you can't I'd, end it there. Because I'd I'd forgotten. It's like I'd got so caught up in what was going on, I'd actually forgotten the time. And I'm like, no. Oh, I'm like, oh, no, they did it. Because normally you kind of can tell it's coming up, and it got. Well, yeah, this was it, one that just didn't get. I I really did kind of do the. Oh, what? No. <laughs> I I was kind of expecting it to pop up uh, towards the end, but I was still like, no, 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 you can't. We have to see what happens <laughs> next. This is what I'm talking about, though. Like the first half of the episode, but those yeah. last five minutes, you're like, "This, this is the real. This is the good stuff going on here. We're getting, we're peeling it back. We've got um, Agnes slash Agatha doing her thing, and it's like now we have a better picture of what's going on. We we probably still don't have the full picture, but now we're like, oh, some things that didn't make sense do kind of start making sense. Well, I mean, it's like, I mean, I was watching something the other day and I'm about like, like all the stuff with Mr. Go and I've got no idea that character so I've had to Google him as well. And I'm like, uh, what, which the, character was that? Mr. Co, Mr. Co, uh, Mr. Oh, Mephisto. Yeah. It's a kind yeah, of weird devil. thing of going like, I'm like, if you're watching it like I am, it's going, they are not like telling that story at all. It's like you're going way too deep into it of it might be something that comes up but it's like we've only got two more episodes to go um it doesn't feel like you know that's something that maybe would have been set up before now um, yeah. because if they just introduce them everyone will be like who you know it's already like that with agatha you know we're like you know she's like she's because at the moment essentially in the mcg we still don't know who she is you know right. yeah, okay so we know she's a witch and she's got some powers but i mean that whole thing with her at the, that whole montage at the end was so good yeah, it was really well done. And it's weird because, like, from the beginning, I was like, oh, Agnes is Agatha. I, I thought that was just kind of a, a given if you knew the comics. I knew, I knew she wouldn't be known outside. I think even if you go back to one of the first episodes where we're talking about WandaVision, either yeah. the, the first two or the, or the third episode, I mean, I'm like, Agnes is a huge character. This is a major yeah. part of Scar- Scarlet Witch's story um, because it's like, well, obviously it's Agatha. But yeah. Uh, Apparently, a lot of comics fans also didn't put that one together. So, yeah, no, um, it's it's again, it's a new villain. I mean, we she's obviously, you know, there's that kind of feeling of, you know, she's going to be a much bigger thing for Doctor Strange, you know, and the whole setting all this up, you know, and there's a lot of other villains and stuff being brought up. But yeah, you know, now we've got a villain. Now we've got a. It's not just Scarlet Witch in there. You know, she's not doing all of it. And this whole thing they've been teasing with the idea of her, you know, not fully having control over everything. Things like, you know, like Quicksilver, which wasn't her. Um, well, uh, even going back to the third episode with that stork. I remember yeah. we, we called out, like, she can't change the stork. What's going on? She can change everything. Why is the stork not obeying her rules? Well, which might make more sense of the fact of she maybe didn't want kids that way. You know, that was the thing. If the kids came along separately yeah well with without going into spoilers both agatha and mephisto played very heavily into the comic version of the kids storyline uh, yeah. i i don't think mephisto's coming into no. this but uh agatha has her part to play i don't think yeah. they're going to do it the same way no but, yeah i think that's way. the thing i think that's the thing everyone's going to remember with with tv with the mcu is it's not the comic books. They take that as the source material and adjust it as they need. They trim it down. They make it more palatable for mainstream audiences. They don't get quite so caught up in the 
wise ways and who's they you look at civil war civil war was so, i mean that played out for years look at secret invasion i mean that's coming up but they are streamlining it they're making it much more palatable uh, not even streamlining it. They're, they're just kind of taking the core idea of it and then going in their own direction with, uh, I've said on this podcast and, and on the Diz Kingdom podcast plenty times, it's like, I hate the Civil War comic series. I, I, yeah. that's that entire crossover. I would wipe it from history if I could, I'd you know, snap it away Thanos style. I love the movie. The movie was yeah. great. Yeah. I think the thing is, well, if they took the concept of it and just made it simple sim- and they got it, kind of i wouldn't necessarily say over and done with because it's obviously still there but it wasn't such you know it and i think that's the thing with this house of m it's not quite it's not house of m it's one division you know there is a different it's a it's a telling of that story um but i just really enjoyed it i mean the whole thing with monica you know she couldn't i mean it's like this big truck and then going well the tr- just the truck isn't going to get through there it's like there's no it's still going to be flipped and turned i didn't quite get the fact of like you know, she's going into space and therefore it'll come through the other side. I'm like, well, surely that wouldn't matter. She could, yeah. yeah. They didn't even bother to try to explain. It's like, it's just going to work. It's going to get yeah. through. And she's like, well, of course it didn't get through. It turned in. Yeah. I, I did like the visual of it being half of like a, a Ford truck and the back yeah. half being like a NASA mm-hmm. rover, uh, especially this week with Perseverance landing. Yeah. But, uh, but it did set up that moment of Monica just being like, all right, I'm I'm just powering right through this thing and show and starting to show off what her powers are going to be. Well, this is it. I mean, she obviously went through, and then that was that was her origin story. I mean, we're talking full on. That this is her origin. She came through the other side. Her eyes changed, and then instantly went. Oh, I mean, it already been. I mean, the fact that they used it in the intro in the intro bit and like highlighted that X ray is not normal, <laughs> you know. And suddenly, then she's because she's the only one that's kind of come in and out and gone back in again. Because while, like, Darcy and everyone and all the people, they've all gone in. They all got sucked in because they were allowed in. Monica was the only one that's gone in twice because she didn't want to. So the second one definitely seems to have done the chain. And then she's just, you know, she doesn't even know she's got superpowers at this point. You know, she's... I think she's... I think she's... No, I don't think she's even aware. Because it's like, she she's strong, but she doesn't really... I don't... Because ultimately all she's done so far is land. Well, land, and she had that few moments where her vision was just completely screwed up, and she could see uh, spectrum. You know, the, 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 yeah. <laughs> the spectrum. Her, her name will probably be Photon, but Spectrum is a uh, a title she had at one point. Well, this so. is it because I mean, even just looking at her history, I um, mean, they're going right, where are they going? They're going to have to pick somewhere to go with this one. Um, apparently, if you had the subtitles on, there was a lot of audio from Captain Marvel coming in yes. when she was going through the, I mean, I could hear like much, it was that kind of thing, the same thing that we had with Ray with um, Star Wars, where they use old um, footage of the things to kind of highlight things going on. But yeah, so that's setting her up for Captain Marvel 2. Um, oh yeah, absolutely. Um, a strong female I, character. I'm just like, yep, we need more of them in the MCU. So excellent. Um, and I just really, as the series has gone on, I've just like, you can just, you know, she's such a, a great character that's been coming out. You know, she's she's completely focused on doing the job. I think kind of it does, you know, you need that kind of sometimes. And I, I'm just was impressed at how they did it. And yeah. Uh, and not just strong, smart too. Because, you know, even though the whole idea of sending that rover through was a bit silly, you know, she was the one who came up with the specs for it. She had the basic design for it. It's like, all right, uh, I, don't, I don't think you should have tried this, but you know, uh, the she's thing got is, the, the ability to do it. Because in the comics, wasn't she like Captain Marvel at one point and she got she was. exposed to Yeah, she, she had the Captain Marvel title for a while there. Um, and in fact, uh, there's a whole storyline with her getting mad at, at Carol for taking the Captain Marvel title back without asking her for it and, and stuff like that. See, in some ways, like that's all too complicated for the, for the MCU. Yeah, no, it's... it's, it's, it's it, it's and I think because essentially they've completely rewrote her origin story, haven't they? It's completely mm, well, yeah, she wasn't tied into Wanda at all, and this yeah. cosmic, uh, <laughs> this mystical stuff. No, she had a well, a, a Marvel science yeah. explanation for her powers, uh, you know, in as much as any of it is actual science, but yeah, uh, magic never played into it, uh, originally. No, so this is so that's going to be because I mean they're kind of a lot of people are going oh this is where they're going to set up mutants like they can do mutants easily, 
Mutants is just a a one one quick headline in a in a movie. They don't need to do it with magic and all the rest of it. And it it does raise the question though: if she got powers, right? Because the powers were starting to manifest after the first in and out, right? Well, she didn't Will... have any powers when she just her her chest, but she was kicked out at force out right. of the hex. So there's nobody else has had. There's nobody else has even left. So everyone that's in there, you can't assume they're all going to get superpowers because they're right. in the hex. But the point being, and that a lot of people are following, is potentially they could leave that open. This could be their alternate version of the... Um, dang it, what was the name of that one? The, the one oh, from the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Oh, the uh, Tenogenics? The, oh, the... Oh, the Aerogenesis, the, right, the yeah. Inhumans. That was yeah. it. Yeah, this could be their second take at the Inhumans, and it could be their way of bringing the mutants in. I don't think it is. I think they've they've got another plan for that, but we'll we'll see where they go. Well, I f- the thing is with mutants to me is it makes so much sense. It's just humans mutating. There doesn't need to be any, um, you know, they they've already. Oh, she's they're talented. Oh no, it's actually you know, and all they need is for an expert to say, oh no, their DNA has changed. Yeah, I mean, we're all at a point now where we've got Spider Man running around, we've got Hulk running around, we've got you know. Black power, you know, they, we're getting to the point now where people will just accept that you know, things are a bit different. So, yeah, I, I do think it would be funny though, because the comic version of House of M was getting rid of like almost all the mutants in the yeah. Marvel comic. It, it, it was a whole thing, it was a really stupid storyline, but whatever they they used yeah. it to to get mutants down to a manageable number. If they used this to create mutants in the MCU, that would be a fun little point of irony. Well, my problem with that, though, is that then you've got like, someone like Logan, right? right? Logan needs to be around for hundreds of years. Oh, yeah. You know, it, kind of def- it would kind of defeat... I don't know. I just don't... I don't, I don't buy it. They, they could... Yeah, I don't buy it either. I'm just saying, hypothetically, yeah. there are ways they could do it. And they could also do it with her reality warping being where, oh, well, I also screwed with the timeline and the mutants have actually been around since 3000 BC when Apocalypse yeah. showed up and stuff like I, that. It's like, you know, it's like Professor Xavier and stuff. It's like, he can't be a professor if he's only had the powers for two weeks. <laughs> so just well, a, he could be a professor. He just wouldn't be a professor of mutants. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. It just, that's, that's the only key thing for me. Of just, I mean, it does also bring up the whole question of Quicksilver. What? Where is he? Where is he from? All the way. I think the fact that we're going to be getting all these versions of Spider-Man and stuff coming in, it's well, it's all going to get very complicated. I mean, you know, we all got J. Joe Jameson from a different universe in in the MCU now. Well, we'll have to wait for Spider-Man for that because the, the rumors around that one are weird. I am curious, though, you mentioned Quicksilver. Did you stick around after? Yes. Okay, just making sure. Yeah. So for anyone, if you haven't watched the episode, why are you still listening to us? Yeah. But uh, if you haven't, make sure that you stick around at least past the, um, you know, the, the transmission screen because this one is the first one that, that does have a scene after that. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. I just not. I think it's normally because I'm just like right, okay, and I don't know why I, I just let that one go because I'm normally just like, okay, cool. I think I must have picked up my phone and started tweeting or something at that point, um, and then it came on. I'm like, oh, so that, I mean, that was a nice quick one. Nice having me in there because he was in there obviously just for like a fraction of a second, but then it's like. You know who's he playing for? Is he playing? You know, is he just a pawn of Agatha? You know, I don't know. You know, she must have pulled that look from somewhere. I mean, it can't be just a coincidence. I don't know. There's it, it's a really strange one. This is the way you do it, though. You answer questions and leave while them. also dropping some new questions in there. It, it gives you that feeling of momentum of things moving forward. Mm-hmm. This is why uh, shows like Lost or Battlestar Galactica had some issues, especially in uh, in early seasons where. Like, we're just going to keep asking questions, asking questions without ever giving you an answer for yeah. them. Uh, yeah. But this, you, mm-hmm. know, you answer the question, and now you've got two more questions, and they're both fascinating questions, and you answer those, and you've got four questions now, and so on. Mm-hmm. So, overall, what did you think of that episode? Uh, you know, the, pretty solid. The last mm-hmm. five minutes are, are definitely the highlight of the episode, and, and another one of those ones where you don't want it to end once you get to that point. Um, Early half, I wish it moved a little bit faster. I will say though, um, those last five minutes don't hit as hard if you don't have the buildup of the 20 minutes before. So I I understand that it it, it is uh, a necessary slow build. Same as like, I'm not hugely fond of the first two episodes of the series. And if I rewatch, I probably will just skip them. 
But at the same time, if you don't have them, the slow build to the crazy and the weird yeah. uh, isn't as effective. It's funny, I think, with this whole series of, I mean, apparently it's now like obviously the, the most biggest show in the world. And it's, I mean, it even kind of brought some issues on for Disney Plus when it launched yesterday, when it fired up. It's been a, this one's been like the slow build up of like people jumping in and getting invested in it. Um, it's like, I mean, I don't like my parents. My dad watched the first episode and never went back, you know, because he did, well, he's not in the zone. He's not in the zone. He just fired it up. And, you know, he said to me the other day, well, I said, you've, you've got to, I said, it's episode four is when you're, and it's like, you know, like my wife said, I shouldn't have to wait that long until it's like, yeah, but there is a, it, it makes sense when you've, I said, but it's a different kind of show. I mean, we've seen it with Falcon and the Winter Soldier instantly just feels like it's going to feel like a very different show. This is not going to be like One Division, And I think in some ways it's got a hard job following One Division because it's going to like, if it doesn't hit the same peak, it might do the opposite of where it just pulls people in straight away. But I do think like one division has got a unique skill that other ones haven't had. And it's also, I think important to note that one division does benefit from the weekly drop rather than yeah. uh, the, the binge drop. I know we harp on this, but this show in particular, I think mm. benefits greatly from having that week of time where people's brains can churn over it and speculate and, and you can get all the fan theories well, going. This is it. I mean, if it was a movie, You'd have already seen what happened with Agatha. You'd have seen what happened in the Bin Bang Boom. And we'd now be talking about the whole of the ending of the series. Now we've got another two weeks to go. So that is a big issue. But yeah, great episode overall. Um, so before we head off, just want to do a big thank you first off to our supporters on um, Patreon and YouTube channel members for helping support the channel. We just want a huge thank you to all of them. Uh, so I'm going to do some shout outs first off. So a big thank you to Sarah for being um, at our platinum level. Uh, executive producer level um also big thank you to andrew jacob um kalal um red mars man andrew chris cody darren the juice lester lauren also james <laughs> see you popped up at that point so big thank you to james we've also got what's on i don't, I don't know what you're talking about there, there's yeah. lots of lots of jameses out there yeah um then we've got bad dog gamer we've got um Ahmed, we've got yusuf we've got ben at the diamond level we've got um Adam, um, Chelsea, Tom, Dawn, Martin, Jeremy, Joshua, and also Sarah. So thank you for all of your supports for you guys. Um, yeah, so there is going to be an extra episode of the podcast this weekend where we're going to be going through the star pre-launch. You're also going to have um, an episode, I think, tomorrow. Um, I think it's Bolt, I think it is. Uh, there's going to be a extra um of our retro review are we doing a live q a tomorrow as well so that's, that's, i've been doing them the last two weeks and they are a lot of fun and you guys seem to be loving them so we're going to be carrying on doing the live q a for the patrons and youtube channel members so again a big thank you go check us out over at what's on disney plus.com especially if you're in australia you know follow, bookmark the website you know rather than relying on social medias but nevertheless um on that note guys thank you very much for joining us we'll see you guys soon laters Later.